Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and with a lot of help from my friends I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore the 112 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. How's it feel to be back? It feels great Patrick. <laughs> That's feels great. really good. So we are back. Uh, I got back a couple of days ago and uh, we just started back in the shop. Uh, it's just me and Patrick this week. Uh, the other guys uh, have all been doing various things while I've been away uh, doing their own things and they haven't quite finished up and got back yet so uh, we're holding the holding the fort down that's and, right um, getting some work started I was in New Mexico and I picked up all of my tools I found a little spot for my things and I'm moving in because I'll be here for the long haul so I'm just getting organized yeah Patrick's moved up here um, That's right. From uh, from New Mexico. Previously, he was always just visiting and had his base down there, but he's now uh, brought all his stuff up here, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. He's going to be here. We're stuck with him, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I've Sorry. tried to get yeah. him, but he just he keeps coming back. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Yeah. Uh, it's good to have you here. Oh. Anyway, I had a really good time away. Uh, it was very rejuvenating. Uh, I wasn't necessarily all that restful because I was running around a lot, but uh, it did make me really appreciate uh, this being here, this project, this work, uh, the community we have. Uh, so I've, I've been really excited to come back and I am really happy to uh, to be getting back into it. So uh, there'll be lots and lots of uh, exciting stuff hopefully happening in the next few weeks. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So as you can imagine, there's so many different parts of the boat that could be worked on right now that it's difficult to uh, really work out the most efficient order of operations. Um, but basically, I'm having to always think about um, what could hold us up later on. And so right now I'm trying to focus on um, things that need to be fabricated um, because that will take some time to, to get them made and then delivered here. Um, so one thing I've been working on uh, since I've been back is the... Uh, the drip tray or oil pan, uh, basically a tray that's going to sit underneath the engine and will catch any leaks. Um, and the reason for doing that now is that that will have to go in here uh, before the bulkheads and companionway and sole goes in this area, just in front of the engine. Um, and I want all that stuff to go in relatively soon because that's going to be where a lot of the electrical equipment is mounted and we're moving on to that pretty soon. So um, I've made up this uh, mock-up a template, if you like, designed this uh, drip tray. This is important because, uh, you know, if and when the engine does leak oil or other fluids at some point, uh, we don't want them going straight into the bilge because if they do, then they'll get pumped out by the bilge pump and they'll be pumped out into the ocean. Um, so that's no good. Uh, we also, it's also just very nice to have a clean tray under the engine so you can see if it is leaking so as soon as any oil does leak you'll be able to you know inspect this and it'll be quite visible um, and then it's easier to track it and keep keep track of how much oil uh, is leaking if it is i am having to put a couple of extra bearers uh, in underneath uh, underneath this to support it so this will be fabricated probably in stainless steel um, and yet installed before the bulkheads go here in front of the engine 
So I've had to make a couple of little modifications to this to get it to fit the space properly. It's a very, very awkward space there underneath the engine, but it fits well now and I'm happy with it. So the next step is just to make a sketch uh, of all the dimensions and so on. Um, and then I'm gonna send it to someone who's gonna model that up in CAD. Um, and then that will be used for the fabrication. So we're just in front of the engine here and this first piece of sawboard in this area is dry fitted now and this area where I'm sitting is going to be where the main batteries uh, for the boat for the hybrid propulsion are going to go. So once these are in then we can construct the bulkhead that's going to go in front of the engine behind my back here and that's where a lot of the electrical equipment will be mounted. Before I can actually fasten this into place though uh, there's a few other things I've got to do. So these pieces either side of the main cabin door uh, need to be just finished off, uh, sanded and varnished or sealed. Um, so I'm going to take them out and do that. But before I can actually uh, do that and put them back in, I've also got to work out exactly how wide that main cabin door has got to be because if these uh, inside edges need trimming at all, it's a lot easier to do that outside the boat. So a few little things to do before can actually get any further with this.
So another job which has been uh, going on for months really, uh, but which uh, I'm working on a bit today is uh, the design for the diesel tanks. Uh, now we've gone through various stages of uh, models. We started out with some uh, door skin or pattern ply uh, templates um, and then some sort of taped together models uh, to fit these tanks in the spaces. We're trying to get them to you know, fit quite accurately the shape of the hull to maximize uh, the size, of course. Now the design of the actual shape is complete. Uh, the tanks are in production. They're going to be made out of a type of plastic. I'm gonna be talking uh, about this in lots more detail when they actually arrive. But for now, I'm just trying to finalize the location for all of the fittings on the tanks. Uh, so of course, there's the fuel fill, there's a vent, there's a return line, there's an inlet, uh, there's a drain and a sender unit, um, and there's access hatches. So all of those have to be located in the, in the correct place. Now, these tanks are so uh, jammed in, there's not gonna be a lot of access to them afterwards. So some of these uh, fittings are quite critical uh, that they're in just the right place so that we can access them. So on the top, for example, uh, where the fill is going to be and the vent and the return there's really not going to be any access to that area from inside the boat um, so what I've just been doing is uh, designing uh, what's going to be a custom bronze fuel fill fitting and as well as having a little hole for the actual fuel fill it's going to have a bigger hole for access because if you imagine this is going to be on top of the deck it's going to be a tank under the deck there's going to be a short hose uh, in between the fill and the tank itself and then there's going to be uh, the other little um, uh, fittings on here and you need to have access to all of those the hoses the clamps the fittings so the only way to do that is to uh, have these uh, custom uh, fuel fills uh, made and uh, this is just the design for the top plate I need to make this so I can locate it on the deck between the deck beams so I can locate the fill fitting correctly under it and all that has to be done uh, before the tanks are made, before they're here. So eventually this will end up going in the right place on the deck and not hitting a deck beam. There is a lot more to be discussed uh, in regards to the fuel tanks and the fuel system as a whole, uh, but I'm gonna look at that in more detail uh, in a dedicated video. Uh, this video is more just showing all the different things that happen within one week here, uh, dipping into many, many uh, different ongoing projects. times we live in. That's going to be a lot different shot than that one, huh? <laughs> Wait, hey, hey. What? <laughs> what? What are you doing, Patty? I'm painting. Why? I'm painting because soon enough, hopefully sooner than later, there's going to be some diesel tanks here. And uh, we won't ever see this bulkhead again, so I'm painting it preemptively so that it's painted and done with. So we can just say, alright, cool, let's throw these tanks in and say bye-bye. That's what I'm doing. Cool.
seems all right for a boat door. Now I know the width, I can uh, trim those panels down to size before they get fastened in the boat for good. Next Prime Minister. It still isn't clear whether Labour will lead a majority government or a coalition addressing supporters. So, Paddy. Yeah, Leah. Wipe that grin off your face and tell me what you're doing and why. Uh, working up here in the Foxhole, um, specifically on the chain locker. I'm lining the chain locker with some black locust. Great work, Paddy. Thanks, bud. Do you want to see my... This is the space I gotta fill with cladding. And as you can see, it tapers forward. So I gotta th start thinking about um, tapering my planks so that I fill this whole space. As you can see, it's wider back here and gets narrower as we go forward. Okay, so another job I'm doing this week is designing the construction of the cockpit and the cockpit area. Um, and now this is one area uh, of the boat which uh, we are changing a little bit from the original design. Uh, when I got the boat there was no cockpit in it, so it was very hard to see uh, or impossible to know how they actually built it originally. I have got the original drawings but we are changing it slightly, mainly to give more room inside the engine room uh, because we've got a lot more uh, equipment in there than they would have had originally. Um, but we're keeping it true to the original style um, and so it's important that I work this out soon because we're soon going to be putting in the cockpit combings and planking inside the cockpit on the benches here 
and the construction of the actual cockpit itself affects how we're going to lay these planks out. Now originally I was planning to put in cockpit lockers here and here which is why there's a, a wide space here. Um, after a lot of consideration um, of how effective they're going to be and how we're going to build them, um, we're actually not going to do that anymore. Uh, I'm going to put another half beam in here. We're going to plank, uh, solid planking over here, and these are going to be sort of little cubbies down below. Um, and we'll be able to store boxes in them and so on. But that does mean redesigning the construction of the whole thing. Uh, so I'm going to be doing some drawings to figure out how it's all going to go together. Um, there's various beams, um, carlins and posts and things got to go in, sills, um, and then there's going to be cladding around the outside and the bottom of the cockpit is going to be a sort of traditionally laid deck. Um, so that's all got to be done uh, pretty soon before we get around to putting the, the cockpit combings in. None of the cockpit can actually be constructed though until the diesel tanks are in uh, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get them in. Um, so that's another big thing that should hold us up and uh, getting the design finalised for those um, is another job for this week. So I'm sure you guys remember Stromboli, the uh, Flying Scott 19 foot dinghy that I got last year um, and that we named after Jen's Stromboli that we eat pretty often for lunch. Uh, well now that I'm back and the weather is warming up we've got the covers off and um, I'm really hoping that we uh, start to sail this boat a little bit more often now that uh, we get these nice long evenings. Hey Patty. Hey! What's going on right now? We're flying the Spinnaker in a pickup race. <laughs> we accidentally got ourselves into a race. So we literally just went out for a little afternoon sail after work and uh, noticed a few boats, went to say hi, and uh, they, they, uh, we asked them if there was a race on and they said, yeah, it turned out we were right at the start line <laughs> just by complete accident at exactly the right time. So we crossed the start line with everyone else, almost at the front of the At of like the pack. third, in like third yeah. position. And uh, so now we're racing by accident. I don't know if it's gonna count because we forgot to register. Well, we didn't register because we didn't know about it. But it's a beautiful evening. weekend in uh, Ross Trevor and Carlingford in Ireland. Brace yourself, Jeff. It's going to be a messy one. Mark and the crew, that's um, a shot across the bounds there for a Monday morning. Wow. 64046 at BBC Six Music. If you want to drop us a line, we've got some great music in this uh, section as well, which is, as always, uh, from artists to artists.
So we just received this package in the mail. It's come from Vitus and they have very kindly provided us with Tally Ho's stern tube and prop shaft. Uh, and the stern tube has the cutlass bearing in it as well. So very excited to open this up and have a look. So quite a while ago, back in Squim, I drilled out the, uh, the hole for the stern tube here and bored it out. And I explained that process in quite a lot of detail so you can go back and watch that video if you're interested. But I didn't bore it out to the final size because I didn't have the stern tube. And now I have the stern tube, I can measure it. Um, and so I can, I'm happy to drill this out to its final diameter now. I'm using this very cool boring bar, which was lent to me by Pete up at Port Townsend Foundry. And uh, it's pretty cool, you just put a little cutter in any one of these holes and uh, you can drill in and then move the cutter back and uh, get more reach like that. Um, and it's got these guides that you position either end of the hole so that the bar is always positioned exactly as you want it and then you can adjust the depth of the cutter to make the hole as big as you like. Looks a uh, little jagged, but but yeah, it's there. Does it look like a hole? It looks like a hole, man. Fantastic. So the stern tube is in place, mounted in the stern assembly. It's just dry fitted, it still needs to be bed and fastened later on. It has actually been shortened, it comes in standard lengths, and so there's a machinist uh, just over in the other part of the workshop here, Dylan, who works with the sort of group of tradespeople over there. Um, and he is very talented and he helped us out by shortening the stern tube and machining a hose barb onto the new end, which is gonna take the stuffing box eventually. I've also got the prop shaft just here ready to go in um, and I'm really pleased with the stern tube and the prop shaft uh, from Vetus. They seem like really, really good quality components, which is why I approached Vetus in the first place. Um, the prop shaft does have to be shortened as well, but we're not going to do that until everything else is definitely in place and we're definitely sure about that length. Uh, there is still quite a lot of work to do on the drivetrain. Uh, there's a thrust bearing, uh, mounting brackets, stuffing box and so on. So I'm going to be looking a lot more at that very soon. But for now, I'm just really pleased to have this stuff in place and really grateful to Vitas for helping us out. So I haven't been filming it because I figure you guys have seen enough sanding and varnishing in this video at least, uh, but I've been getting more coats of varnish on these panels throughout the week. So I've got four coats of Epiphanes on there now. Uh, I'm gonna put more on, but uh, it's pretty well protected for now. So I can get back to uh, making and fitting the sole boards uh, below where my feet are right now.
So this video has perhaps been slightly different uh, to my normal videos in that rather than focusing on one specific task, I've tried to give a sort of sense of the variety of uh, different jobs which might happen within any one week here. And it's often like that. There's so many different things going on at once. And although I try to film and edit a lot of them this week, I didn't manage to film or edit uh, most of it. So there was a lot of other stuff uh, that wasn't even in this video. Um, just trying to show a sense of what a week around here is like. I've also enjoyed making this video. Uh, it's always a lot of hard work making these videos, um, but I feel like I've got back a little bit of the, the inspiration or playfulness or creativity um, that I had a while ago. So let me know what you think if you enjoyed this video more or less than usual. And um, as always, Thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means that we're able to keep doing this work and that I'm able to make and edit these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.